How many of y'all know there's a powerful war going on? Powerful war. <laughs> and in this war that is happening, God is preparing his children to not only enter battle, but to stay in battle, not retreat. And in this battle, it's an everyday battle for me and you. For those who are truly walking in faith, walking in the spirit. And the purpose of this is not only to rescue God's children, but to destroy Satan's kingdom. You know, if the body of Christ was more in unity in the spirit, a lot more things would be done. And God is guiding us right now in this process, not only to enter in, but learning and understanding the satanic strategy of Satan's kingdom so that we're always one step ahead or more. And the Bible says that the Spirit tells us all things to come if we're listening, if we're listening. And it's important in this battle and the purpose of this battle is to keep us in a place where we can hear, where we can listen, where we can receive, where we can submit, where we can surrender, where we can trust, where we can walk in faith. And, and so by doing this, God can not only flow through you, but use you and not be so concerned of losing you. Because right now, the Bible tells us that in the latter days, many will fall from the faith, and many are falling from the faith right now. Falling from the faith, falling from the will of God. They've gone in the arena of belief and not stayed in the arena of faith. Because the Bible tells us that even demons believe, but they have no faith. And faith is the unseen obedience to trust God to provide everything you need. And that can only be established in a relationship. In a strong relationship. In other words, he doesn't want us to assume. The Bible says faith comes by what? Hearing. In other words, as God tells you something, you know it's God. But you're going to be able to discern whether what you just heard is of God or not. And then you, if you'll do what's of God and he tells you to do it, there will always be a manifestation and a victory. So everybody got it. God will not go tell you to do something to lose the battle unless he's trying to prove something in the area that you have a cursed item. How are you listening? He did that with Joshua, didn't he? Would you grab your Bibles, please, and go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians chapter 6. In verse 10, would you read it with me? <laughs> Finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil or the trickery. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But what? But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the age of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Now, uh, so you, you got to understand something. Again, in this, Paul has revelation in this that your fight and my fight is not against physical arena. Even though we see a manifestation in the physical arena, but your fight and my fight's in the spirit, isn't it? We're fighting demonic forces. You're fighting demons. You're fighting territorial spirits, principalities, and all of the unseen arenas of satanic army, Satan's kingdom. This is what we're fighting. Has everybody got it? You can let, let me share something with you which is important. When you're struggling and you're going through things, it's our responsibility, your responsibility to make what is unseen to become seen to you. Because if you don't make what is unseen to become seen to you, you're easily deceived, easily tricked, easily caught up in the wiles of the devil. And that's what he's saying. He's saying, listen, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. See, when we do things in the flesh and we try to fix things in the flesh, it's the power of our might called willpower. But that only lasts temporarily. But there's a power of God that penetrates, destroys heals and delivers and rescues. And this is what he's saying. So he tells us in verse 12, listen, this is what you're fighting. You're fighting evil spirits, wickedness. You are not fighting flesh and blood. And I emphasize that again. It's our responsibility to make what is unseen to become seen. So when you're struggling with something, it's because there's something there. It's not because you got up on the wrong side of the bed. It's because you shook hands with the devil already. He cannot get you unless you get, he gets you to agree with him. And that comes through his voice. So everybody got it. 
Good. In verse 13. Now he says something very powerful. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to what? Withstand. Go through. Endure in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. And he tells us, stand therefore having what? Gird your waist with truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now what he tells us, he says, get dressed for battle. It's amazing and how many people still do not put on the full armor of God. And it's amazing that they're so quick to get dressed in the physical, but not quick to get dressed in the spiritual. And I'm telling you, if you don't get dressed spiritually, you're an open target. And in this, I'm going to explain a couple of things because it's very, very important. He says in verse 16, would you read it with me? It says what? Above what? Above all. Above all. Now, this is good. Above all. In other words, he's emphasizing this. Above all. Out of all the full armor of God, this is the one that he says above all. He says above all what? Take the shield of faith which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Take the shield of what? Faith. Faith. Now, we've been talking about increasing faith, right? Take the shield of faith. So, your, the faith, by increasing your faith, the more your faith is increased, the more you're able to shun off, knock off, allow the shield to protect you from the voice of the stranger so you don't come in agreement with him. Has everybody got it? And then he says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, that's what you use to attack with. So the shield is to do what? Defend. The sword is to attack. Now, he says that the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And then he says in verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Now, most people will tell you that there's six parts of the armor of God, but I'm telling you that there are seven and the number seven means complete and perfect and praying in the spirit means praying in tongues. So everybody got it praying in tongues. Now he says again, I want to review this quickly, the power of his might and it's by dressing us. So you're going to ask the Lord to dress you with the full armor of God every morning, not the armor of man, <laughs> the armor of God. What? To defend and to attack the powers of darkness. And we already discussed what the powers of darkness are. Again, the shield of faith. It didn't say the shield of belief. It said the shield of what? Faith. Has everybody got it? It says the shield of what? Faith. Not the shield of belief. It says the shield of faith. Which stops the poisonous venom of the voice of the stranger. The sword of the spirit. Is the arena, which means the word of God, but it's confessions because the word spirit means breath. So you are confessing, you are decreeing God's word. It becomes a sword and it is to use to attack Satan's kingdom. Now, he says, and make all of your prayers and supplications praying in the spirit. Why do you pray in the spirit then? Well, we know that praying in tongues, the first thing it tells us is to what? Build up your what? Most holy faith. Do you get this? Build up your what? Most holy faith. So what you're doing is you're increasing the strength of that shield. Does everybody get it? You're increasing the what? The strength of the shield. Building up your most holy faith. Of course, we know that praying in tongues also prays the perfect will of God. Brings you rest. Brings you refreshing revelation. And the devils don't understand what you're praying. Would you turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1? 2 Timothy chapter 1. Tonight's teaching is called First Strike. How many of y'all want to be first strikers? It's amazing. Why should we wait to counterattack? Why not attack? You know, I, I, I get a lot of people that call me and tell me, man, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. I'm saying, well, what did you do this morning? Well, you know, I had two pancakes over easy. And, uh... <laughs> and, you know, walnuts and... And I had waffles and, you know, and French toast and 
cup of coffee and two donuts. And, and then I asked the Lord to bless me. Well, that's good. You wonder why you're fighting and you're struggling and you can't get anywhere. But they call all, all disturbed and frustrated because, first of all, they didn't attack. I totally believe in first strike. I don't want to attack. I don't want to counterattack. I want to attack first. Now, if I get an attack back, then I counterattack. But see, they won't penetrate. If I attack first, they can't penetrate. If I wait for them to attack me first, they're going to penetrate. And they're going to cause harm. So everybody got it. So you're to attack first. You should be a first striker. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6. Is everybody there? Would you read it with me? Therefore I what? Remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying out of my hands. What's he talking about? Stir up what? What's the gift? Tongues. He's saying, man, remember I laid my hands on you, got baptized on the Holy Ghost, right? Stir up the gift. Stir up the what? Gift of tongues. Why? Because you need to build up your most holy faith. Now look at verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a what? Sound mind. So obviously, the spirit of fear is waiting to attack you as soon as you get up in the morning. Are you listening? You are to stir up yourself in the Holy Spirit. Why? Because your faith needs to get stirred up to overcome fear. Has everybody got it? And the more you pray in the Spirit, the more your faith is going to increase. Faith will produce because your faith is increasing. See, what the spirit of fear does is try to nullify power, love, and sound mind. But your faith, as it increases, the shield of faith will quench those fiery darts of the devil. It will give a Holy Ghost slap to the spirit of fear because he can't penetrate. And you will be able to overcome fear. And you will maintain the power of God. You will maintain the love of God. And you'll maintain a sound mind with clarity. Is everybody with me? Go to Jude. Well, I don't have the gift of tongues. Well, get it. It's a promise to every believer. It's a baptism in the Holy Spirit. Go after it. We have prayers to get to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Pray them until you get it. And as you begin to pray, pray in the Spirit, listen, God is not holding back anything from us. He's not holding back anything. How do you receive? By faith. Didn't everybody get saved by faith? Well, didn't you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit by faith? In Jude 20, would you read it with me? But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your what? Most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Does everybody see that? And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but on others say with what? Fear. In other words, with power. Pulling them out of the fire hating even the garments defiled by the flesh. So everything he talks about here is he says, build up your faith. Why? So you can maintain the love of God, maintain the power of God, and maintain a sound mind. Looking, looking. What are you doing? You're looking in the arena of Christ's thoughts. You're looking as the mind of Christ is looking. So are you now? Is everybody okay? Go to Second Corinthians chapter 10. You know, the Bible tells us to start our morning in prayer. You're to start your day in prayer. Let me share with you, that's where battles are won. If you're losing battles, it's because your prayer life is weak. Listen, you can read all the books you want in the world and still go to hell. You can have all kinds of knowledge. You can believe all kinds of things, but have no faith. Now, we know the three areas of faith building is praise and worship, praying in the spirit, and decreeing word. Why? Because the faith comes by what? Hearing the word of God also. But there is an area where God is trying to bring us in that arena where you are able to penetrate and travel through and move in the third dimension. And in that area, you're dead. And the devil can't kill something that's already dead. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 10. Is everybody there? Oh, glory. In verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are what? They're not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, which are known as memory lies. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And being ready to what? Punish or attack. Has everybody got it? 
all disobedience when you're what? Obedience is fulfilled. So our weapons of warfare are spiritual, aren't they? It's associated with thoughts. Those are fiery darts. So we're talking about raising our, increasing our faith to quench more of these fiery darts that are coming against us. And we must be ready to attack. But you can't be ready to attack until we've complete discipline and obedience, which is the first two attributes of the process, the regeneration process. Discipline and obedience. So you must be disciplined and obedient in the morning. You must be disciplined and obedient in the first thing in the morning to do what you've got to do to get dressed and do what you're supposed to do in prayer. Then you will have authority, dominion, and victory. That's the first dimension. That is a part of your foundation and my foundation. It's the part. This is foundational. Again, I want to share with you, this is foundational. This is your foundation. This is building your foundation is to be disciplined and obedient. That is the first dimension. You won't be able to go any further until that is mastered. You'll try, but you'll lose. Does everybody get it? People try to go to the other arenas without being disciplined and obedient to the first. And they end up bringing shame to the name of the Lord, falling, because the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy In other words, you must be faithful. There must be discipline and obedience, which is the part of the first foundation. And if you have your sheet, you can look at that. Again, discipline and obedience is the foundation, the first part of the regeneration process of a new life. Discipline and obedience. Now, there we have things that help us in this area. Because, again, I want to share that prayer is where battles are won. If you're not an individual that prays, you won't win any battles. And the welcome to the kingdom card is important. And we give these out to anybody that wants them. And it's just a little guideline to help you pray in the morning. And and one of the first things that we should do first thing in the morning, because we're talking about first strike, right? Is to first of all, invite the Holy Spirit to come and help you pray. You need help, don't you? And then you start praying in tongues. Why? You're stirring your faith up, aren't you? You're overcoming all the other garbage because your flesh is waking up with you also. In fact, your flesh hasn't slept yet. (laughs) And your flesh just wants to lay in bed, turn on the TV and make popcorn. Or have pancakes in bed. (laughs) Over easy pancakes. (laughs) So what we want to do is invite the Holy Spirit to help us pray. Speak in tongues to build up faith. So that you can make connection with the other side. Again, battles are won in prayer. So you must get ready to battle. Now, the first thing you're going to battle, your first battle is over yourself. (laughs) Over your flesh is your second one. Your third one is over your mind. And the fourth one is over your environment. Wherever you may be, there may be things going on around you, whatever, you know. So in these four areas is where you're going to battle. As soon as you open your eyes, here it is. Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I'm going to help me pray quick. See, he wants you to know that you are dependent on him. I don't dress myself. I ask him to dress me because I'll probably put the wrong buttons in the wrong place or something. Again, I want to share with you, as soon as you wake up in the morning, you must battle. Your first battles are over yourself your flesh, your mind, and your environment. That's why you must start praying in the Spirit immediately. And if you haven't got the gift of tongues, which is waiting for you at the table, you start praising and worshiping the Lord right away. Hallelujah, praise your Lord, I love you. The next thing you know is you start praising God, you'll start ripping off in the Holy Ghost, so praise God. That's the first thing in the morning because you must be a first striker. You must strike first. Does everybody get this? This is important. That's how you start. As soon as your feet don't hit the ground until you start that. Go to Romans 12. Romans 12. You know, because you've got to have victory in your room before you can go anywhere else, right? <laughs> in verse 1, 1 through 3, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you what? 
Present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or your responsibility. So when you get up in the morning and you begin to invite the Holy Spirit and you begin to pray in the Spirit, one of the things you want to do is start repenting for anything that is quickened to you. Lord, I'm asking for your forgiveness, for your mercies and your grace. Lord, forgive me. I repent for every word, thought, and deed I've done that's offended you. I repent for any works of the flesh, dead works, selfish ambitions, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. I repent for any dreams that I had. What are you doing? The reason why you're repenting is because you're activating the blood. The blood must be activated. Then you start applying the blood. You can, you can go right through your kingdom card. I apply the blood of Jesus on myself, my, my family, the home, this, that, whatever. You activate the blood. Or well, you first activate the blood by repenting for anything that you might have done as you approach the Lord. Why? Because you're going to present to him your spirit, soul, and body, and flesh as a living sacrifice. It's his. See, anything that you hold on to, you're accountable. Everything that you give to him, he's accountable. And you repent. Present your spirit, soul, and body, and flesh to the Lord. And then ask him, well, Lord, wash my spirit, soul, and body with the blood of Christ. Empty me of any selfish ambitions. See, the purpose of this is so that you get in a place where you become emptied and undress. You're going to undress your carnal self. You're going to undress your carnal self and get dressed with divine nature. You're going to undress yourself, flesh, carnally, and get dressed with the divine nature. And you must do that in the morning. Is everybody okay? And you continue to pray in the spirit. Why? Because you're building up more and more faith. See, you're getting, you're starting to build up so you can attack. See, you don't even realize it, but these bullets are now starting to fill the Holy Ghost bazooka. All the, all the artillery starting to load up in your bedroom or wherever you are. I mean, the angels are starting to bring things. They're all getting ready. They're putting on their red sneakers and ready to go. And they're, they're getting ready to kick butt. And, they're, and as you're getting stirred up, they're getting stirred up. Yeah, yeah, man. Let's go. Come on, let's kick some butt and a devil. Let's tear down some altars. Let's rescue some children today. But it's amazing how many people stop. And they're going like, yo. What are you doing? Come on. Let's go. We got work to do. Uh, I'm going to take a break and go get those pancakes over easy. Second Timothy chapter 2. Is everybody okay? Remember, first strike. This is important. This is a part of foundation. Your foundation. Second Timothy chapter 2. Now, some of you already know this, which is good. Now it's time to teach it. Everything you learn here, you better be able to teach it. Because everybody in this room is called to be a teacher. So everything you learn here, you should be able to teach it. If you're in here not saying, how can I teach this? Then you need to change that attitude. How can I teach this? How can I teach this? How can I teach this? Or else it will stay intellectual and you never get in your spirit. And the devil will come and steal it then. Boom. Second Timothy chapter 2, start at verse 1. You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men who will be able to what? Teach others. You, therefore, must what? Endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. We see here then that you and I must endure. We must maintain separation from the world. And we must compete or warfare according to the rules of the spirit as we engage in our attack. Everything is associated with the spirit and how we're attacking. Why? Because we want to strike first. In James chapter 5. James 5. That's why it's important once you become a believer that and you, and you start getting in, involved in fellowship because the fellowship is important to be plugged in somewhere that you go through deliverance. Every believer should go through deliverance at some time and then learn how to maintain your deliverance and keep it up. And, and sometimes people are afraid to go through deliverance. But let me tell you, 
everybody, every believer should go through deliverance so they can get freed up from the entanglements that they've inherited, that they've come in agreement with. Why? Because that's actually first strike then, isn't it? You're already striking. Why? Because if you can't get this house cleaned up, hello. And, and God, want, I mean, didn't Jesus go into the temple, pull out a whip, and start throwing out all the money changers? Well, there's a lot of money changers in people. They don't even realize. There are people are still struggling with certain things and trying to stuff it under the rug. Or they just think it's them and how they act or something that they react to. Or there's bondage or addiction or whatever of some sort. If you don't have control over something, it's got control over you. In other words, there's, a, there's something in your members that's running your life that you constantly go back to, you go back to, you go back to. That's a spirit there. And it's inherited curse, self-imposed curse, or temporary curse, whatever it is. But there's an, and a curse is where a demon has a legal access to you until it is broke. That's why everybody should go through deliverance. You don't even realize what's there until you go through deliverance. <laughs> then you realize. In James 5, in verse 13, If any among you is suffering, let him what? Let him what? Pray. Let him pray. Didn't say call 911. Didn't say call your pastor. <laughs> Didn't say call nobody. It said pray. So you pray first. And then if you have to call, you call. Amen. Make sure you hear from God, though. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the what? The prayer of the what? The prayer of the faith, not the belief, the prayer of the faith will what? Save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sin, he will be what? Forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Now, this is important. Look at this. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. In other words, God is listening to the prayer of the righteous. Has everybody got it? He's listening to the prayer of the righteous. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Now, in these prayers that you and I are establishing every morning, in the, especially in the area where you want to become a first striker, again, I'm going to back up a little bit. First, you've got to strike everything around you and overcome yourself and your flesh and your thoughts and your environment. And you begin to expand outward. And this is where authority and dominion and victory starts to manifest. So the prayer, our prayer, that's where victory is, isn't there? In other words, as you endure in prayer, victory will be established. Defeat is not an option. Defeat's not an option. Doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. Mistakes are not defeat. Does everybody get it? A mistake is not a defeat. Because then you just get up real quick and keep going, right? But there's a difference between a mistake and breaking covenant. Breaking covenant is a defeat. Making a mistake is not. Go to Psalm 18. Now, God has given us three major weapons, which is called his name, his word, and his blood. Those are the three major weapons of God. And he's also given us two keys called binding and loosening. It's amazing how many people still don't know how to bind or loose. And they're bound, hoping to get loose. In Psalm 18. In verse 31, is everybody there? Oh, glory. Would you read it with me? For who is God except the Lord, and who is a rock except our God? It is God who what? Arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarge in my path under me so my feet do not slip. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Everybody said, I have pursued my enemies and overtake them. Neither do I turn back again till they were what? Destroyed. I have wounded them so that they cannot rise. They have fallen under my feet. 
for you have armed me with strength for battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You have also given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. They cried out, but there was none to save, even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Why? Because they were your enemies. If they're your enemies, they're his. Mm. Then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind. I cast them out like dirt into the streets. Now, there was a man who was warring, brother. Let me tell you, that was warfare. He was pursuing his enemy. He said, you ain't getting away. Why? Because he knew how to first strike all the time. David struck first. But how did he strike first? With his decree, didn't he? He began to speak it and decree it. He says, I'm pursuing my enemy. I'm pursuing my enemy. Does everybody understand that? I'm what? Pursuing my enemy. What was he saying, though? Hey, the Lord, you arm me. You strengthen me. So he was in his prayer. He was saying, Lord, you're doing this for me. Why? So I can go kick butt on the devil. But do you understand that it was the Lord now that was arming him? It was the Lord. See, when I go to the Lord, I say, Lord, please dress me with your presence, your glory, your love, your compassion, your truth and righteousness. Peace, joy, faith, sword of the spirit, cloak of humility, armor of light, divine nature, your continence. Let your face shine upon me and let miracle signs and wonders follow. What did I just do? I just got dressed with the full armor of God. Does everybody understand that? Lord, anoint me. Grant me more wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment, strength, and boldness. Grant me favor. Open doors that are of you. Shut the doors that are not. That I may bring home a harvest for you. Grant me a huge harvest for your glory, Lord. Let the arm of God be my strength. Go before me as a consuming fire. Snare my enemies in our own. That's why I escape safely. And wherever you go today, Lord, dispatch your angels that I may bind every strong man in power of darkness, that I may enter in and plunder the goods of the evil one. For you who are with me, but not against me, so that no armor formed against me shall prosper, so that he is in me is greater than he is in the world, that I can do all things through the anointing through Christ who strengthens me. Does everybody understand this? Those are decrees. What am I doing? Now, by the decree, God is beginning to position me spiritually. He's beginning to position me by the decree. I don't know where I'm going yet, but he's now he's positioning. Go to uh, Proverbs 8. So I guess I need to back up a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is what? Invite the Holy Spirit, right? Start praying in the Spirit. The second thing, we're going to repent and present ourselves as a living sacrifice. The third thing we're going to do is decree. Decree God's arm. Decree his power. Decree. Why? So he can dress you. And you're going to ask him to address you and fill you and empower you to be about his business. And Proverbs 8, verse 12. I, wisdom, dwell with what? Prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to what? Hate evil. Do you know what you're supposed to hate evil? I didn't say hate the person. I said hate evil. This is where you need to ask the Lord every morning. Lord, grant me more wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment, strength, and boldness. Revelation, confirmation, manifestation, impartation, yeah, visitation, dreams and visions. So you have not because you ask not. What was he asking for? More wisdom, wasn't he? He said, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth. I hate. What was he doing? Making confessions, wasn't he? He said, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles and all judges of the earth. I love those who love me. What's he talking about? Wisdom. And those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and, are, and honor are with me. Enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yes, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice that I may cause those who love me to what? Inherit wealth that I may what? Fill their treasures. That's wisdom. So what's he going to do? Give you the victory. He's going to tell you what to do, isn't he? That's what wisdom does. Tells you what to do. Wisdom tells you how to fight. Wisdom tells you the strategies. Wisdom will expose the devil's strategies also. So the fourth thing we're going to need to do is get more wisdom, knowledge, and favor. 
discretion, boldness. You cry out for that. So you're, you're making, you're asking for more. One of the things I ask the Lord to do is to go before me as a consuming fire, snare my enemies in their own nets that I may escape safely. In other words, you have not because you ask not. You must decree these things. You don't think these things and hope these things. You speak these things. That is the sword of the Spirit. You must attack first. Go to Psalm 109. Psalm 109. First strike. Verse 1. Ooh, this is good. Do not keep silent. Do not keep silent, O God, my praise. For the mouth of the wicked and, and the mouth of the deceitful have opened against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They have also surrounded me with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. In return for my love, they are my accusers. But I give myself to what? I what? Wait a minute, man. You didn't call your neighbor? Didn't call a friend? Didn't call 911? Didn't call his pastor? Didn't call the prophet? Didn't run to a meeting? What did he do? I gave myself to pray. Why? Because he's getting ready to attack. He said, man, all this is happening around me. I am not going to take this lying down. I'm going to go pray, and I'm going to attack. Thus they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Now he begins to pray. Set a wicked man over him, and let an accuser stand at his right hand. When he is judged, let him be found guilty, and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few. And let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. Let his children continue to be a vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also from their desolate places. Let the creditor seize all that he has and let strangers plunder his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy to him, nor let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Let his prosperity be cut off and in the generation following let their name be blotted out. Now, that was a heavy-duty attack, let me tell you. Now, I'm not encouraging you to pray that against another humanite. <laughs> Today, we're supposed to bless our enemy, you know? That way, God does it. He avenges you. But I wanted you to see this example of how they used to have to do it in the Old Testament. <laughs> Amen. But what did he do? He, he went to pray. He attacked in prayer, didn't he? See, if you're struggling with something, you got to understand that it's not you. It's something that's there causing the struggle. So the fifth thing we want to do is attack with the word. You want to what? Attack with the word. That's warfare. It's the sword of the spirit. See, now you're beginning to, you've attacked locally, then you begin to expand out more and more. But if you haven't got victory in your own little surrounding, how do you expect to get victory Further out, devil eat you up. Daniel 10, Daniel chapter 10. Is everybody there in verse 10? Daniel 10, 10. And suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, don't be afraid, Daniel, from from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. I want to say that again. From the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come because of your words, not because of your tears not because of your needs. I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. And now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days from now. Now, so I want you to get this because this is important. Because he said that, the prince of Persia, which is a principality, prevented the angel to bring him a message. Now, how many of all know you have legions of angels working on your behalf? 
So if you were to assist your angels by binding principalities, how about territorial spirits of the water, land, air, and sea? Because there are territorial spirits of the water, land, air, and sea. How about if you start binding them that will come against the angels working on your behalf? See, now you're warfaring, aren't you? You're first striking. You bind the principalities, powers of darkness, wickedness in heavenly places. Every spirit that's under the authority of Satan, every strong man. Now you can go further. You can start binding deaf and dumb spirits, spirits of pride and arrogance and haughtiness, spirits of fear, anxiety, and stress. Lying spirits, spirits of murder, killing, and death, jealousy, and rage. Does everybody get it? Now you can start binding these spirits. Why? Well, the uh, spirits that are coming in to steal, kill, and destroy in the lives of myself, my wife, my family, the ministry, the flock, the students, disciples, and so forth. See, now you're doing intercession, which is something that pleases God. But you must be one who first strikes. You must first strike. Now you're binding all these powers of darkness. So if Daniel knew how to bind and loose, you'd think the angel would have showed up sooner. Yes. It wouldn't have taken him 21 days. He would have got there sooner. But Daniel didn't understand. He didn't have the keys like you and I have the keys. And we need to use these keys. It's essential. He said, set your heart to understand and humble yourself. The sixth thing that we must maintain is to maintain a humble heart. In other words, you approach God, not what you need. You approach him and who he is. And as you do warfare, you acknowledge him. In other words, you're acknowledging him. Lord, I'm taking my authority as your son and servant. And I'm buying every principality, power of darkness, wickedness in heavenly places. I am not taking authority just because I've been granted it. I'm taking authority because I am your son and I am your servant. There's a difference. Now, you're, bringing, you're humbling yourself. You're not letting your authority become prideful. You're letting your authority to maintain you to be humble. And you begin to use the keys of binding and loosening. And we've got all these teachings on this. First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5. You know, if the whole body of Christ would be first strikers, I'm telling you there'd be a lot of stuff changed. We wouldn't need so many conferences. <laughs> Hallelujah. You wouldn't need so many retreats. <laughs> I don't like that word anyways. I'm thinking, why are you going to a retreat, man? I thought you were supposed to fight. <laughs> yeah, we're all going to retreat. Bummer. <laughs> Gideon's army didn't retreat. <laughs> First Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Therefore what? Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he what? May exalt you in due time, casting your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour. Resist him. I want you to understand that that word resist now means attack him. <laughs> Hello. He says resist him steadfast in the faith, right? Well, you have the shield of faith, don't you? Well, when you lift that shield of faith up, you don't let the sword just lay on the ground. And I'm telling you this, that that shield of faith is there to defend. Because once you start attacking him, he's going to start throwing stuff at you to try to prevent you to stop. He's going to bring all kinds of things to your mind. He's going to bring all kinds of things. Uh, even He'll even try and bring sickness, disease, everything. But I'm telling you, if you're attacking first, whatever he'll try and put on you won't last. It's got to go. If you will learn how to attack first, you'll find victory. Because if you have to counterattack, you're wounded. If you're not attack, one who's attacking first, you've already been wounded. And then you've got to spend time and get go through healing or deliverance again because you come in agreement with something when you should be attacking. I, I'm telling you, this is so important that if the body of Christ would begin to first strike, we wouldn't have so much problem. We probably have the right person in offices and stuff like that. Hallelujah. Let the God be the glory. His will be done. It says, resist them steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So listen, you ain't the only one. So attack first. Don't wait to get attacked. Look at, don't take it lying down. Get angry. Hate evil. Pursue your enemy. Whatever you're struggling with, pursue it until it's no longer. Go to 1 Pete 3, 13. Praise God. I can see everybody tomorrow morning. Yes! Ripping off those blankets. <laughs> I'm on you, devil. Yeah. 
In verse 13, And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid. I said, do not, I said, do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. You know, all of a sudden you'll be attacking and all of a sudden this voice will come to you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to harm this. I'm going to do that. Don't stop. Just call fire from heaven down. Oh, I see you can do that too. But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed and do not be afraid of their threats nor be troubled. It's amazing and how many believers that don't want to talk about the devil or attack the devil because they're afraid. I mean, he'll really get me if I stir him up. Well, it's too late. He's already got you. But sanctify the Lord God in your what? Hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be what? Ashamed. For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. So this is where we take our authority over fear again. You just got to bind that spirit, cast them out. Even my daughter does that, who's nine. One night she woke up. I think I might have shared this with you. One night she woke up, and all of a sudden she came running down the hallway and jumped in bed. So what's up, man? She goes, uh, well, a spirit of fear came in my room. And I couldn't get out of bed. So I turned my face away from him to the wall. And I began to bind and command that spirit to leave my room. And when he left my room, I got up and ran down to your room. (laughs) And Proverbs 18. Did you ever sense something to come in your room at night? You can sense that spirit. Fear, panic, whatever. Something could even be lost. Whatever it is, that spirit comes in your room. Did you ever wake up choking one? That's a demon. He's gotten in your house and he's trying to choke you. Devil in the house. Now somebody could have brought him in that house. There could be an accursed item in that house. Or it could just be a friendly attack to kill you. Hello. I mean, you know, in fact, last, I think it was yesterday on TV, I was turning the stations and they showed this one woman who's supposed to be some beautiful model and all this stuff, but she has problems sleeping. And I guess they recorded her sleeping and she's been, she chokes every night. Of course, I, nobody heard me when I was casting a devil out through the TV. So the demon stayed there. But um, in this, I'm thinking, man, I mean, that's all you need to do is cast that thing out. And here's this woman gagging. I mean, she was on camera every night. And uh, they, they kept saying, you know, this has been going on. Finally, she died. And they were trying to diagnose her with some kind of thing. But I'm thinking, man, check the fingerprints. They probably wouldn't be in the database, but they're in the eternal base. And, you know, just check with the Lord. He'll bring it up for you. But I, I'm, when I saw this, I thought, my God. Because I remember that happening. I remember it happening to me. Especially when you first get saved. Man, you get attacked every way possible. You know, but they call this, I, I forgot what they call it, some kind of deprivation of some sort of, I don't know. Some sleep syndrome, whatever. I'm saying sleep syndrome. It's a demon, man. He works at night. It was just frustrating me when I saw that. I thought, man, this person needs to learn how to attack. But apparently she died, so I don't know where she's at right now. God might have rescued her. I don't know. Proverbs 18. And verse 21. Read it with me. Death and life are in the what? Power of the tongue and those who love it will what? Eat its fruit. So what comes out of your mouth is life and death, isn't it? In the power of your tongue. How many of you got power in your tongue? Revelation 11, verse 3. Revelation 11, verse 3. Now, we have a book called Prayers That Rout Demons. And these are some powerful prayers. This was brought to me. And uh, I encourage... It's by uh, John Eckhart. And I'm telling you, you can open this book up to anything that you're struggling with and make some good confessions and kick some butt. It's called The Prayers That Rout Demons. It's an excellent book. So that whatever it is you're struggling with, you can start doing attacks with this book. 
And by just confessing these things, you're doing warfare. Because it's already, it's already in here for you. Prayers are route out. Prayers against Satan's kingdom. Prayers, warfare prayers. Um, dealing with spirits of the desert. Uh, prayers against Jezebel. Prayers against all kinds of stuff. Uh, destroying yokes and removing burdens. Destroying evil cauldrons. You know, um, Closing breaches and hedges. Breaking curses off and so forth. This book is excellent. It's a nice little handbook. And I just encourage you to get it. And Revelation chapter 11 and verse 3. Is everybody there? And what does he say? And I will give what? Power to my two witnesses. And they will prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. Now I want you to understand that these two witnesses will be here in the, in, during a uh, seven-year tribulation. But their spirits are here right now. But they will physically manifest during that time. So everybody got it. It's the spirit of Elijah and Moses, I truly believe. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before uh, the God of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their what? Mouth. Do you understand that when you speak, fire comes out of your mouth? Fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls on the days of their prophecy. And they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. So I want you to understand something that when you speak, what comes out of your mouth is more than what you can imagine. In fact, even the Jesus rebuked the disciples because they knew about Elijah calling fire down from heaven, right? So they were going to start calling fire down from heaven. And Jesus said, no, don't do that now. You know, because the disciples were ready to kick butt. Well, let me share something with you. There was this, um, every time Kate and I would come home, and we'd have to go around this corner when we were going to, I think we were going to somebody's house or a church or something. And there was this gay bar. And every time we'd come home, I'd say, Father, I call fire down on that building in the name of Jesus, but don't hurt nobody. Well, about the third or fourth time, one day we were driving, all of a sudden we came around our corner, and there was nothing but ashes. I went, hallelujah. I mean, that place was cooked, gone. I thought, whoa. And so I just prayed that whoever was in there would get saved, and, you know, because I never prayed for against the people. I just destroy the place of gathering and hope that they would get rescued. And Kate and I both would do it. And every time we go by there, we touch it. Lord, we just touch and agree. Fire down on that place. Every time I go down OBT, I'd call down fire in certain areas. See, you have power in your tongue. I call fire down on every spirit of assassin of destiny in their foundations that will come against my prayers, supplications, and requests in the name of Jesus, and I cast them to the pit and put the blood between us. See, you have the ability to call fire down from a heaven, destructive fire down. When we praise and worship on Friday night, we're calling the anointing fire down. But you have the power and authority where all heaven is behind you to call destructive fire down. I'm telling you, I've, I, I drove by there. That place was whew, gone. It kind of put a little fear in me. Then I had to be careful, you know what you pray. But we want to pray God's perfect will, don't we? So this is a part of your attack. Call fire down on the powers of darkness, man. How about calling fire down on their altars? You know, we call fire down, you know, you know that uh, Satan's kingdom, they kidnap kids and they sacrifice them. And especially during Halloween, because that's their high day. So during those periods of time, we gather together and we begin to call fire downs on the altar of Baal, Satan's altar, making a way of escape for these kids, making a way of escape for those who've been abducted. Call fire down, man. Don't take no more garbage. Get in the spirit and become a warrior. You know, you can rescue somebody, save somebody's life, get somebody saved, healed. There is no distance in the spirit. We are called to be warriors, third dimensional warriors. And in that area where there is no distance or time or space, you just go for it, man. But you must attack 
first. You get up in the morning and you attack. So you're, listen, if you're struggling with a physical problem, a sickness or disease, you attack. You command those demons to leave you. Those are infirmities. If you'll go back far enough, you'll find out somebody in your family had it and it's been passed down to you. Or you brought it on yourself by touching an agreement or whatever. If you'll fight and not give up, you'll have the victory. But the enemy will always bring fear and try to cause you to move another direction. Calling fire down on all these shrines that they have, you know? James chapter 1, and we'll close here. You know, the Lord has the last say, doesn't he? Thank God there wouldn't be much left. <laughs> Some of us will be calling fire down on every corner. <laughs> say what? Fire. Oh. oh, I didn't mean that fire, Lord. <laughs> I meant the anointing. In James chapter 1, verse 21. Is everybody there? Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be what? Doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is or was. And he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If any among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion there before God and the Father is this to visit orphans and widows in their troubles and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Keep yourself unspotted. So the seventh thing we want to do is call fire down from heaven. Destructive fire down. And, of course, keeping yourself clean, staying in position and being led, maintaining the fear of God will keep you in that place where all of heaven is behind you. And don't forget, it's always a good day to die, isn't it? Is everybody okay? Become a first striker. It is important. Don't wait to get attacked. Attack first. And if there's a counterattack, keep attacking. Keep attacking until you have victory. Never give up. Never. Because victory is ours. It's been granted to us. It's been predestined to us. No matter what's going on. Financially, physically, every area. And this book will help you hit some prayers, hit places more directly. Amen? Everybody okay? Praise God. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you for your mercies and grace. We ask, Father, that you'd quicken us in the area of discipline and obedience. Laying that foundation for you said no man can lay another man's foundation but that which is in Christ Jesus. And that's associated with the anointing. Lord, we want to be obedient in every area. We want to be disciplined so that every morning we can attack first and be pleasing to you in every area of our life. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And Holy Spirit, I'm asking that you'll visit everybody here. Visit them in dreams and visions. Visit them first thing in the morning. Even if you have to show up with a baseball bat, give him a Holy Ghost home run and get him in position to attack first for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen.